So what match were Cesaro and Sheamus in at WrestleMania? Uh, none. Well, oh no, no, they were in a match. They what? were in the SmackDown Fatal Four Way uh, match. The the, the the irrelevant match. Yeah, so so then why were they main eventing both Raw and SmackDown this week? WWE Creative. I don't know. I, I heard uh, WWE Creative is no longer WWE Creative. There's a oh, lot of you didn't know? <laughs> Boom, don't you know? Uh, we're live. Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, Travis, Brother Bob. I'm in studio. I haven't been in studio in so long. I have a completely different hairdo or lack thereof one. I'm completely, I'm rocking the bald right now. Uh, nice. So, uh, you got your you got your Kurt Angle look going on. I do. Well, I have a bit of or a Or The bigger, Rock. I got, I, or Austin. My beard's a little bigger than, so, um. Lots, lots, <laughs> man, lots to talk about since uh, Mania Weekend. You're back. Uh, you don't voice like isn't. <laughs> your voice isn't, but, I mean, you survived. You survived the trip. You didn't yep. kill your kid. Nope. That's a start. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, that worked out okay. All right. So, obviously, we're talking, It's we're post-Mania Weekend. We're through the debacle that is supposed to be the best Raw and SmackDown of the year, and they were just uh, trash. Yeah. Mania the, weekend until Monday, it was great, right? Like, yeah, give, we got to give credit where credits due. Mania was good. There, there's a lot to uh, a lot of explanation behind why uh, Raw and SmackDown ended up being so bad that Everybody we've now kind of. Well, I mean, <laughs> we got we got injuries. We got people who like left Mania early. We got we got a lot of crazy stuff. Whatever. And I mean. Um, I know the the most recent thing I seen is that uh, Brock Lesnar walked into Mania said late said he wanted to be the main event. They told him no. He said that I want to be the opening match, which is why they went on first, and then he left immediately afterwards. And you know what? Good for that. Because yeah, it, it, I, it, it worked on the show. Yeah, like is that is that one of those? I'm going to punish you. You're not giving me what, and it worked on the show. Because, yep. All right, we got to give. I I've seen. <laughs> I saw this full spectrum, uh, leading up you know into the Mania show. And throughout the Mania show, then after the Mania show, like it was like worst Mania ever. No, it wasn't. Go yeah. back and watch like Mania four. What is it? Like two four two? Is it was it two or four? Was two was the multi venue one? Right? Yeah, that that's really hard to watch. There were some good Maybe matches th- well, occasionally, but three it, obviously. Three. Andre. I mean, it might have been four with might have been the multi four, yeah. multi the, venue. The, the, but yeah, some of those single digit Manias. We're not that good guys. Yeah, <laughs> like so. Absolutely. Even as bad as Mania has been probably in the last five years especially mm. like some of the decisions and the booking they've made um i i feel like people are putting this mania over because they got everything they wanted and the kitchen sink and the doctor of thugonomics yeah. like you, this was and like i tweeted the mvp of wrestlemania weekend and we'll, we'll talk about aew is aew wrestling because vince wanted to send everybody home happy and i mean everybody you got Every single result on that mania card mm-hmm. was to make the crowd pop. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, I, th- I think it's also a combination of uh, not just AEW, but the fact that Ring of Honor New Japan ran a really right, good show right. in I, Madison Square Garden in the same with, weekend. With the mania, you know? with the uh, AEW news breaking, I think we can't, uh, the TV deal news breaking, I can't think we can't overstate how much. And, at, you know, it, it's clear that at least. Triple H and some of the higher ups at the company know what's going. You have to assume Vince knows what's going on in a business context. He's yeah. following it as competition. So, um, but you got to give credit where credits due. My big criticism with Mania was that it was seventy two hours long. <laughs> there was a lot of unnecessary clips and Elias. Uh, it was great seeing uh, John Cena, uh, but you didn't need Elias out there for ten minutes pumping it up. Yeah. Uh, the clip package leading into him with Babe Ruth, it made sense with them being in New York, but it really, it, you don't really need that. You uh, throw Thugonomics up on the screen and just yep. roll with it. Everybody's going to pop. Exactly. And they did. So uh, it was a really good show. It, one of the better manias in the last 10 years. Yeah. And definitely so. the most feel good mania since Mania 20. Yeah. It's a yeah. really, yeah. That's a really, you got all your winners, you know, Kofi winning big, uh, Seth winning. Uh, you, you, uh, Becky won. I that's what I <laughs> that's what I expected. I was like when when they had they put Kofi over mm-hmm. uh, after putting Seth over in the opening match. I was like, they're gonna put that title on Charlotte because th- that that's Vince making everybody really happy because they they know that nobody's gonna be. Nope, credit to them. 
they made everybody happy. Mm. Well, ta- talking in numerous other podcasts and uh, in YouTube channels at Bullet Club Block Party, we were sitting there uh, chatting, um, and a lot of the consensus was, all right, it looks like Brock might be staying around, and uh, it looks like Kofi and Becky are winning. So it doesn't look very good for Seth. Seth is probably going to be the one who who loses, you know. So, yeah, I mean, him winning right out the gate shocked a lot of people. Well, it looks like Brock is going to go try and put that that Cormier match together and have his UFC fight. Why not go get that payday? I mean, I know Cormier wants to retire. Um, He's proven that he's – they're doing – you know, UFC, we're shooting. It's uh, Saturday evening. We're shooting. There's a UFC pay-per-view tonight. Yep. Cormier has really found a sweet spot on their, you know, a broadcast team, and he's great. Uh, he said he wants one, maybe two more big money fights, and he's out. He's going to retire. Lesnar's the biggest money fight out there. Mm-hmm. There's there's a couple other logical fights for him, but Lesnar's the big money fight, and I think he he beats Lesnar. So I I think he wants that fight. Uh, so Lesnar's got to jump and take it before the op- the, that window closes because Cormier is the kind of guy he's he's just gonna um, he's gonna be done when he's yep. done he's done he's gonna walk he, he has he doesn't care he's got a he's got got a ton of talent he's got another you know he's got a gig with the company why keep getting punched when you don't need to get punched you know other than that last big money payday or two so Absolutely. it makes sense for Brock to, to go and if he's gonna go and do a full camp and they're gonna slate him you know, I that fight probably wouldn't be at this point until late summer or fall. Mm-hmm. You're not going to see him much. Get the belt off him. Yep. Put it on a guy like Rollins the fans love and uh, go from there. And then immediately swerve the fans by having him and Kofi title for title and then ended in a, a BS oh, finish. That Monday night, that was terrible. That, that was awful. A-W. <laughs> A-W. I thought, I thought they were going to I thought they were going to reunify. Uh-huh. And I, I thought with the superstar shakeup that we're going to see the end of brand splits. I think that's the direction we're going. Uh, Fox has reportedly said they don't want a brand split. They want, they want everybody. Yeah. So, well, I they've also said the, they don't want to promote any shows on any other networks. Yeah. It doesn't make any so, sense. I mean, so, I don't know. I thought maybe they, they'd end the brand split or, or, or keep a brand split, but have both titles beyond, you know, one person, both the men's and women's. And then lead up to, the uh the new TV deals and have those titles end up split just before the TV deals. Maybe I, and I'm I like that would have been cool, but obviously they didn't go that the, route. Yeah, cause... the Monday night booking and the Tuesday night booking, both both, <laughs> both shows were really letdowns after a really great weekend. Uh, uh, like the worst thing up until Monday that had happened. Poor Bret Hart getting blindsided. Yep. by some amateur MMA fan that is clearly unstable. Oh it's yeah, been charged. Um. You know, he, inflammatory things said on Twitter, uh, hating on the women in the main event, talking about women need to be in the kitchen and all yep. that. And, like, look, the guy's troubled. He's he's gonna he's gonna do some time, probably maybe get some help. Hopefully, yep. like you you know, I'm glad to see Bret Hart was good. His his hair was a little askew, <laughs> but he got up and finished the speech and yep. and uh, good for that. Um, but that was really. The, the only thing that went wrong throughout the week and i mean uh nxt was a rousing success that that card and we'll we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the card 5.5 Meltzer for the main event of adam cole so and good jenny gargano that third, and you know what i thought after after the matches leading into that those for the first fall i was like man is this match gonna fall flat boy was i wrong <laughs> like it, it, and it, it wasn't bad i was just like man i thought this was gonna be the match of the show and it just it didn't start that way it ended mm. that way yeah that was amazing that was an uh, and and it, there were multiple matches on that show uh you and i talked i was like of the big matches like that were on that show uh starting with war raiders and then and then uh up to the main event the women's match and fatal four ways are always i don't know have we ever seen like four and a half star fatal four way i'm sure we know. have Pro- but probably like, sometime but, like, but how few and far in between right yeah. it's really hard to do a, a good fatal four-way and i felt like the women really they did their best they could and that was maybe like three and a half or 3.75 stars mm. it was a really good match 
and it paled in comparison. I like every other match. I was like four and a half stars at least on every other match. It was, yeah. it was just incredible, uh, and it was the right length. I got everything I wanted, regardless of the results. Uh, and it, it just everybody. I I was just. I was like, well, good luck anybody following that, and everybody apparently did. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, and I think when everybody's like, you know, best show of the weekend, it's really hard to pick this time because a lot of it's going to come down to personal preference because that was yep. that was three good shows, and I, I would go to extend it even into a fourth show because Thursday night I watched Josh Barnett's Bloodsport. Mm-hmm. Guys, <laughs> for the love of all that is wrestling goodness if you don't want to watch the whole show, I know it's a niche thing. Like catch wrestling is kind of a niche thing, but go watch that main event. Go watch Minoru Suzuki and Josh Barnett beat the ever loving crap out of each other to a time limit draw, extend five minutes and go the, go the limit. Uh, those two guys just, Oh, it was great. And there was, there are other great matches. Uh, uh, Dan Severn was on the card. Looks great at 60. Very short match against Frank Mir. Mm-hmm. Uh, very, very short, very believable match. But, I mean, again, he's 60. Taking a lot of damage over the years. But he looks good. He went out there, put Mir over. Real good match. Uh, uh, some other good undercard matches. But just do yourself a favor. Watch the main event. Watch it in full. I wouldn't say it's not something even I as a fan like I like watching some catch wrestling once in a while. It's not something I'd watch every week, but like every six months, uh, a show like that, I'm mm. watching it. I'm all in, I'm I'm there. Like I'm in on that. Uh, but watch that main event because that that's one of the matches of the weekend. I was like, oh, good lord! It, it, especially if you you like old school, you, you know, wrestling, or even if you like, you know, the the strong style, the Japanese strong style. This is basically kind of what it was. It was like this mix of real shoot fighting and Japanese strong style. Amazing. So good. <laughs> the, so good. The more Minoru Suzuki, the better. That's that's my opinion. Yeah, I, I, I was going to wear my Minoru shirt, but it, it, like I wore it earlier and it was still dirty. So, um, because uh, I mean, I'm I'm a Suzuki mark. I have shirts for days you do have sitting shirts. around. Like I mean, like we I just did the uh, unboxing video earlier and went through like I'm like, well, I can literally wear shirts for another week or so, and uh, not have to do laundry just off of what we purchased uh, over Mania weekend. Man, that's shirts for days. So let's talk a little bit. Let's start. Let's just go in chronological order. Start Friday night. Right. Let's talk NXT. Great, greatest show ever, right? No, I mean, it was a great show. Really um, good, as was the pizza I was enjoying, you, the brick you, oven pizza in New York while watching it. You you were you were there, but didn't go. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. No, you were doing other things. So, at least you got to watch it. A um, couple notes from the show. I don't understand how WWE continues to have this much talent clustered and not put on great matches just on monday night alone let alone their pay-per-views because like the the riddle velveteen dream match i like i thought that was i personally thought that was the best match of the night five stars like that's a five-star match that that was was my favorite match of nxt it really was like and that's why when i said the the main event i was like are they just like that how do they beat that well i mean like kind of coin Adam, Adam Cole baby that's how you beat that yeah it's it's <sighs> really good and I th- I'm afraid now like we're gonna see him move up and get buried I don't know, r- rumor has it that uh Roderick Strong's leaving the group so we'll see how that plays out we'll see uh another takeaway from NXT takeover uh does Walter have the hardest chop in wrestling yeah very very <laughs> possible <laughs> like brutal yeah like, it's brutal and and uh they they really talk about ring psychology they mm. told a story you know pete dunn being the smaller guy the, yeah. going back to the joint manipulation and you know being up but being tough the tough smaller guy but and walter but walter's chops and slaps are just next level here here's a question for you with how much they threw at walter like they he, i mean that match he took a pounding uh just a complete beating and like who and what is gonna have to happen for someone to beat him for that title 
I mean, yeah, he's going to hold that title for a yeah. really long time, which is not unprecedented. Obviously, I don't think he breaks he breaks the the streak uh, that that it just ended. But I I, I don't know who beats him. Yeah, it's like, like I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, I he's don't gonna hold it for what at least a, at least a year. I mean, right? is he gonna is he gonna pull an Oscar and and you know leave with you know as champ and and have it. You know that would make sense, and then go up to the roster and get buried. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. You, we're, we're, you see the trend we're talking. Go to the main roster, get buried. Go to the main roster, get buried. Uh, and the, the I guess the you know besides just you know marking out over the main event, we can just go on and on about the main event, how good that was. The the fact that they know how to book tag teams in NXT and that doesn't translate to the main roster at all because well we know we know vince doesn't like tag teams i mean that's that's been said that vince doesn't like tag teams so i can understand them not getting the same kind of booking on the main roster with vince still so hands-on with the uh the main roster product but but kudos to them for getting it right you have two phenomenal singles talents in black and ricochet that everybody loves but they can't win against the dedicated tag team yep. the high level dedicated tag team that is the war raiders and i you know i've been a huge fan of war machine going back to when we saw them live yeah they were just incredible in person and it looks like those guys have benefited uh from being at the performance center mm-hmm. they they look like they've trimmed down in it not really got smaller but like just got cut up a little bit not not like don't they're not sh- never going to be like super shredded but they just look better like they're hitting the weights every day two hours a day like you can do at the performance mm-hmm. center when you're at nxt because and you notice this about the top tier talent when they come out of nxt they usually are in great shape they're in the back or if somebody comes back off an injury they're in great shape and they are benefiting from that right now they look like they're in the best shape of their career obviously phenomenally talented and they're doing great stuff in the ring and uh, and that match showed it too that's one of the best tag team matches in wwe that i've seen in years it was just an amazing match yeah uh, war raiders i mean they've been good everywhere they went you know you expect the same out of them from uh from nxt and uh ricochet and uh and black have have put together some good matches even though they're not really a, a real tag team yeah yeah i mean well but that's okay like when you put two very talented guys together, again, they're going to beat the regular tag teams, but they shouldn't beat the champions for the belts. Yeah. You should never see that. And they got it right here. They had the tag team prevail, but everybody, nobody got hurt in that match. Yep. Everybody looked great in that match. That's And if you're going to do 50-50 booking, really, that's what you want, right? You want everybody coming out looking like roses. Yep, yep. So, uh, so let's talk about like the big one that you were at. You were there, MSG, man. And you were on, t- like you sent me, I you told me you had good seats, right? And you kind of <laughs> told me where, well, I didn't realize how good your seats were. Holy crap. Yep. Like, so your kid took a bump. Yeah, That's yeah. Great. You know, when you, you go to, you go to Madison Square Garden and take your first bump, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Bumps as fans. Uh, yeah, you, uh, what match was that? You wound up with people in your lap. Uh, well, so we almost ended up with Osprey in our lap in the opening match. And then we made it through the entire show without anyone flying at us until Okada, the cheater, the big cheat Okada, decided he needed to throw uh, Gato and Jay White at us and cheat to win. I still think New Japan needs to overturn that. I, I'm, I'm starting a re- letter writing uh, campaign. I'm like, I'm like, man, you, you can't be throwing wrestlers at the crowd. That's, that is not called for. And that, you know, decision needs to be overturned right now. And the belt needs to go back to the real champion, Jay White mark <laughs> yeah no um you, you you were sending me some photos you had great seats and and you know i i watched i watched the pay-per-view and it was a great show yeah. like there's a lot of really uh lot there's a lot of, I, I really hate to nitpick because like again there's you can nitpick on anything i guess the one the one thing that a length was a little bit of an issue mm-hmm. here not rate mania issue uh but Ring of Honor and more specifically New Japan has yep. some experience with longer shows. Wrestle Kingdom's a really long show. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they have some experience putting on a longer show, especially those that that those talents. 
so I don't think it suffered as much as Mania, but length was a little bit of an issue. And then the 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 segment with Bully, and I'm not talking about the run in with Enzo and Cass and all that. We'll get to that. But the segment, the, the hip hop artist, uh, uh, out the there hit, and, yeah, yeah, the the music. It felt like WWE light, yep. and I didn't like that. That's th- other than that, I can't really like. What what am I going to criticize? Like great mm. matches, like they yeah. were they, they were loaded with great matches. Uh, you know, you, you you obviously you had all the all the belts being defended. Yep. You got champions galore. Uh, 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 God is riding very high. Absolutely. I mean, you know. Bullet Club lost uh, the junior title and the world title, but you know they they, they won the ROH tag title. So champ they, champs. They have they have the same amount of belts still. So champ champs. Yeah. Um, another big one was uh, Zack Saber Junior. Oh yeah, picking up a win on Tanahashi. That's yeah. big. That's big. That's huge, sure was. man. Um, well, and Cobb winning, uh, being Osprey and becoming double champion, like yep, that was champ, a big champ, deal too. Another, another yeah. champ champ. So we had some really great results. Uh, Bob. I mean, you were there. What what was your match of the night? Um, oof. that the main event was really good. I mean, Okada J White, but you know you expect that. Um, I think the match I had hoped was going to be match of the year uh, or match of the night. You know, um, was that tag match the the fatal four way? I think that got hurt by that whole Enzo Cast run in thing towards the end, which was a um, great word. Yeah, like. I like for the first 12 hours, that's one of the best, like best, one of the best works I've seen in a long yeah. time because they didn't shoot it. Nobody wanted to talk about it. It, it went viral on social media. Well, I, I mean, I loved uh, what Tom and Tonga had to say about it. I mean, he was like, he was like, all right, so these jabrones come in and they attack the guys who lost. Yeah, that's great. Like, you're welcome, boys, for you know us handling your 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 heavy work for you. And I'm like, oh god, that is so good. He's like, he's like, who comes in and attacks the losers? And, and I'm like, oh, cap. so good. Exactly. Uh, anyway, back to the, so so match of the night. Like, um, I, I got I gotta say, I mean, it's, it's got to be uh, Okada J White. I mean, that was such a good match. So yeah, it was really good. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, the the battle royal the start was pretty pretty. I think impressive as well. I, Battle Royal, yeah, so you know, it's a really big surprise entrance. Yeah, well, I can say that I was at Madison Square Garden and watched a match that featured Haku, Minoru Suzuki, Jushin Thunder Liger, and the Great Muda. How big was the Muda pop? Oh my God, people were like losing their person, mind. Yeah, like I saw a video. Uh, obviously we watched it, you know, the paper. But I saw a video on YouTube. Somebody that was there, and they were mm. like seated way off to the side, like behind like so their seats were behind the big screen yeah. on the floor and uh, you know it popped up and he kind of come and the place it sounded ridiculous it like yep. peaked the phone to where it mm. like aired the sound and it, it, it was just like <laughs> i was like yeah okay it, that's a big pop. and it was like a slow build because like the big the major fans as soon as like the music hit and and the first image pops up they knew who he was and so they started yelling and then as soon as that image of him with the nwo face paint on from the wcw yeah, days yeah, pop yeah. up the entire rest of the crowd figured out who the hell it was yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and it just, just built and oh man it was yeah, crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. Was and then cool. when it was him and uh him and liger last two in the ring before kenny king came in and screwed everything up uh Ooh. yeah man like people were losing their minds like just what? how do you how do you have what? Liger and Muda and oh L- so Liger, good. Liger, Muda, MSG. Um, I will say, uh, just to play devil's advocate, maybe if I was looking somewhere other than the main event mm. for match of the night, uh, Ibushi Naito. Yeah, that was. Oh, that was yeah, great. K- Kota Ibushi and Naito. That that was a really really good match too. Um. And you know, we almost had a uh, Abushi like fly out into our lap at one point too. So I mean, it was it was a lot of a lot oh, of uh, a lot of scares there uh, for the crowd. Um, but yeah, no, uh, that match was was high octane. Uh, you know, spot after spot, just just really, well, they really good pacing. Ring of Honor and New Japan kind of proved that they can run in the big league. Mm-hmm. They can produce a big a top tier yeah. big level show. Um, we'll see how long that holds because like. I want to I want to talk a little bit of mania before we get into all the breaking news yep. that that occurred after the week. Um, but obviously, Turner Broadcasting's putting 
AEW in the upfronts. Mm-hmm. For, so, it, it, like, this is not. Maybe the contract isn't officially signed. They're going to be on a Turner station. Yeah. They're probably going to be on TNT on Tuesday nights. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. And with some of the numbers that are being reported that they're offering contracts to people, Dean Ambrose, yeah. uh, I mean, this has got to be a big money TV deal. Yes, Tony and uh, his dad put in $100 million, right? Yeah. But I, I have to assume that this... This Turner Sports deal for primetime TV, with the money they're throwing around, is at least comparable to the WWE contracts in terms of a startup. Like yeah. maybe half the amount. It's well, gotta I mean, be. I, I, I would I'm think it's like comparable. Hundred million. Hundred million. I'm thinking maybe it's. Yeah. Uh, maybe the deal was that that they would match the startup funds. Uh, I don't know. Like, we'll have to see what the terms are. But this has got to be a big money TV deal. Mm. And without without running a single show on TV yet, obviously, it's it looks like it's going to be October when it debuts post all out in Chicago. AEW is the second biggest wrestling company in the country. Wait, you mean that that piss ant T-shirt company? The second biggest wrestling company in the United States. Yeah, it kind of is. Um, <laughs> no offense to you know, it's not Impact. Yeah. It's definitely not Impact. Like they they are on the wastelands of TV. Yeah. And no offense to Ring of Honor, they're doing really good things. But you have to work to find Ring of Honor. Mm-hmm. You have to be a fan to find Ring of Honor because yep. here it's on like Sunday night at, or Saturday night at like twelve thirty, and then on Sunday night at like two a.m. Yeah. It's it's in a real bad spots. Yep. National TV. Every cable provider in the country, 8 p.m., two-hour prime time. Yep, you're, yep. The se- you're the second biggest company right there. Yep. You can't argue with that. Yeah. And we'll have to see what happens with their, their pay-per-view distribution and whatnot to see how that all works out, too. Well, it sounds that's a like lot. they're going to have some sort of streaming option. And I fe- you figure they if they're coming into this environment, into, into the climate and into the business today, WWE has WWE Network. New Japan has their network. Ring of Honor has Honor Club. Mm-hmm. You have to have a streaming service. It's got to be less than fifteen bucks a month. Yeah, like so, and you got to start with that because people are going to people are not going to be willing to pay thirty or forty or fifty or sixty dollars a month yep. for a pay per view. And I, I think when the WWE, I think people criticize the network a little bit too much because, you know, we've been around long enough, especially newer fans. I don't know how many of those there are at this point, but newer WWE fans that don't remember having to shill out 40 bucks a month for a Mm -hmm. pay-per-view, that got expensive in a hurry. Sure did. So just 10, 12 bucks for the network, whatever, depending, you know, I mean, inflation happens, but it's it's a really good value just for the pay-per-views. And, I mean, a talking – I mean, we were in a lot of lines this weekend for a lot of things, so we got to talk to a lot of people who are wrestling fans. And one thing that I find in, found interesting was a lot of your fans going to Ring of Honor New Japan don't watch weekly Ring of Honor TV. They tune in for – they have Honor Club and they have New Japan World and they tune in for their, like, big shows, and, you know, that's what they watch. They don't watch the weekly programming. Um, a lot of people I talked to – uh, haven't been watching Raw or SmackDown. They said, you know, hey, I go online, I find out what's going on, and then I, you know, watch the pay per view on the on the network. And I'm like, well, if if we're in a climate where that's the case, and a lot of people are just seeking um, the the big shows and not following TV, uh, you have to make sure those big shows are available at a reasonable price because um, you're not going to be selling to them with your weekly TV every week. Those those fans. Yeah. Uh, would you say the letdown of the MSG G1 show was the uh, three way ladder match? I think so. I don't. I it don't. It wasn't bad. No. It was just, it was not as good as I think everybody wanted it to be with that much talent. Well, boring. everybody was behind uh, Marty Skrull. And I mean, we, we most of us knew he wasn't going to win. I mean, it, it's likely he's going to be an AEW contracts coming up end of the uh, uh, end of the month, I believe. Soon. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it just he, he they weren't going to put the title on him. 
And so that left you lethal and Taven. And I don't, I think everybody had, uh, you know, set their expectations of, all right, well, lethal will retain because Marty can't win. We really want Marty to win, but we'll be okay with lethal retaining. I don't think anybody went in saying, oh, we think Taven's going to win and we really want Taven to win. I think that was one of those situations where, um, which would have been similar to if uh, Lesnar had beaten uh, Rollins, where people were like, oh, well, it could happen, but no one's going to be happy about that. And uh, the other weird thing that happened, there were a lot of people, there were a lot of people that MSG show, and I don't, I don't care what WWE says about how ROH and uh, New Japan are niche markets and they can't draw mainstream fans because... There were a lot of people at that show who didn't know what the card was, didn't know who the wrestlers were. There were people at three hundred dollar floor seats by us who were asking, you know, one of their buddies, like, "Oh, who's this guy? Who's that guy?" Throughout the show, and there were a lot of people when that ladder match ended who were getting up to leave, thinking that had been the main event. Ooh, yeah, and that's and tough. and like like there were people walking out like, when. No, 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 no. Yeah, and then then they announced you know, the the main event, and a lot of people had to come back in from from the well, lobby. At least they were able. to. I mean, yeah. Like, so it was it was interesting good. to see how many people had paid big money to sit on floor seats for this show who weren't really up to date with that product. Huh. Yeah, that is that's interesting. Uh, I mean, it's something you see with WWE all the time. You go, you turn on, they got random celebrities and shit in the crowd, and you know right, that happens. Right, right. But uh, it was interesting because, and I think part of the fact that they got Madison Square Garden, it was a historic moment. I yeah. think people who were wrestling fans for years before decided that this was the show they needed to check out. That could have been part of it. Yeah. Uh, but overall, uh, top down, great show. You know, mm-hmm. so like like I said, if if you were, for me, like I was following along. You know, I watched Bloodsport on Thursday night. Yep. And I'm like, this is great. Awesome show. All in. Totally great. Watch Friday night. Watch NXT. It blows me away. Yep. It just blows me away. Let's... NXT is probably one of my favorite pay-per-views in the last decade. Like, mm-hmm. it was just amazing. And then we get into Saturday night. Another great show. Yep. Mania. Now I'm expecting a letdown. Yeah. I'm expecting a gross letdown. And I think everybody who's a you know a hardcore fan was people were already this is awful this is gonna be terrible worst mania ever blah 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 and you get a really good mania yeah to, well, and, be, you, yeah, and before man. we and before we get into like going through the matches and stuff uh something else i found this weekend an insight that uh sh- surprised me um i mentioned you know all all the whole time before you know leaving for the weekend like that you know with the constant decision that i was going to go to um G1, that's why we were going to New York. You know, we had to pick and choose the things we went to. Um, WrestleMania just wasn't something, um, you know, at that price point and, and, and at, like, WWE's tendency to poorly, you know, deliver on their pay-per-views wasn't something I was willing to invest in. There were a lot of other people who felt the same way. And interestingly enough, there were people who I talked to from the New Jersey area, from uh, Philadelphia, uh, the surrounding Pittsburgh area, um, the New England area, who drove in to go to the MSG show, uh, who drove in to go to Bullet Club Block Party, and were going not home going to and not going to Mania, or who were going back to their hotel well, and not going to Mania. Mania is expensive. Those it's tickets, very expensive. And, and one tweet I did see, uh, this guy had a bad Mania. Uh, he posted a picture from his seat, mm. which he paid... I don't remember what he said, but it was abs- it was it was almost a thousand bucks. Yep. It was way up high, and he could only see a third of the ring. <laughs> it was obscured by like the Titan Tron, basically yeah. whatever the big screen. Yep. And he, the his tweet was you know basically, hey WWE, I'm going to tweet at you every day until I get a refund <laughs> because I paid. I don't remember what it was, some absurd mm. amount of money, and this was my well, he, view. He must and have it was bought it through ju- party for that price, because, I it, mean... I don't know. I mean, maybe yeah. at that, but I'm just saying, like, it was... It, all the Mania tickets are expensive. Yeah. But his view, he seriously could see a third of the ring. Yep. And we've talked before... Another issue that WWE has, and it seems like they got it a little bit better this year, was the lighting. Like, Mania's lighting last year, that blue lighting, mm. it was hard to watch on TV. Yeah. And we two Manias in a row specifically, people are like, we can't see anything. Yep. 
the lights are just oppressive. We can't see anything. Well, apparently uh, the same thing happened during AJ and Randy Orton's match. In fact, so much to the point that Randy and AJ both uh, on Twitter mentioned, uh, brought up that they were disappointed that the fans couldn't actually see their match. Yeah, that sucks. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a problem. But, you know, that happens when you have such a large venue and you need to try to try to figure out lighting and you don't have a, a roof on it. And So you know. because we don't want the podcast to be 95 hours. Yeah. We can't cover the 742 hour WrestleMania show. Yeah. Let's uh, match matches the highlights of Mania for you. Um, so Kofi, Kofi right? winning. Kofi's that was nice. big deal. Like, yep. Finally. Yeah. Finally. Yep. Um, you know, that women's main event that was, uh, the, the right person won. A lot of controversy won. though. The, yeah. The right person won and, uh, the women were in the main event and both those things were good. I don't know about that finish, but you know, it happens, man. Like, it sucks that it happened, but stuff like that happens well, all the time. Are we really gonna are we gonna smash the ref when it clearly sounds like there was like edits in this match? Like uh, you know, it's there's apparently Ronda was injured in the match. Mm. Like, I, are we really gonna? It happens, guys. Yeah. They could have wrote it into the story. They could have continued the feud. There's a lot of possibilities. Oh, the refs screwed up. Yeah, refs screw up. Yep. But back in the day, that used to not be a bad thing because they would write it into the story mm. and it wasn't a big deal. Or it was part of the story already and it was kayfabe. So it wasn't a big yeah. It was a big deal in the story, okay? Um, I don't know. Ron, Rhonda uh, should just be happy she didn't have to tap out to the move that she said looked like it was fake and like her, like Becky was stroking her pretend story. penis. That that yeah. is true. Uh, I mean, I guess my, like obviously Kofi was a highlight. Mm. It was good seeing the belt come off of Brock. Yeah. Any anytime. Um, and I don't know, like. Everything was really. Uh, uh, it's easier to talk about this because it's like good match, good match, good match, good match, good match. So like disappointing. Baron Corbin, Kurt Angle. Yeah. Like I didn't want to see that match to begin yep. with. Eh. Mm. And then you bring him out on Monday night. Uh, I w- I was disappointed that the revival lost. Um, I mean it, that feel good moment for for uh, Ryder and uh, Hawkins. Yeah, Hawkins. Like, but, th- I mean, that was a feel-good moment. And it's in New York, and that's why they did it. But, so. I mean, it just shows again that, like, all right, here, here's a tag team that, you know, you, you guys were going to leave. Who You're like, oh, no, we're going to push you, and we're going to fix the guys, and we're going to take you guys seriously. And here they are having a job right. out on Mania um, after, you know, making the match kind of an afterthought to begin with. You give you give Triple H and Batista almost twenty five minutes, but you give uh, Finn Balor and Bobby Lashley four minutes. Yep, and they could have done without that. I mean, I, Triple H and Batista was good though. Like, I mean, I that could have been a real stinker. Re- remember, remember the report that uh, the reason they took the IC title off Finn was because they had big plans for him for Mania. Yeah, big apparently plans. winning the big IC entrance. title and like big plans. A couple minutes. So. Yeah, that was that was the big plans. Um, I mean, yeah, it, it's really you know, uh, Shane and the Miz was not great, but it was good. Mm-hmm. Like you knew there were going to be some wild, crazy spots. That all right, you know, Miz gets screwed. He he you know, he 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 hits him with a big suplex off the rig, but gets screwed. Yeah, eh, that's pretty standard for like that's storyline worthy. You mm-hmm. know, uh, although. Uh, Mrs. Dad as a meme is like one of my favorite things ever. Oh, yeah. Like that, that made that match worthwhile. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> so good, man. Uh, it would have, I think it would have been, and maybe this is how you run it back. You run that match back and you have, you have a uh, Mrs. Dad low blow Shane and help Miz pick up the win mm-hmm. in, in like the rematch that you got to assume this feud is going to continue, right? Well, who knows? Like, we got superstar shakeup. Maybe none of these, maybe feuds none continue. of this. Uh, but yeah. That'd be a great way to blow off that feud and have Miz pick up a win because it doesn't make any sense to have, you know, Miz get screwed out of a win unless he's going to, you know, eventually get over Miz is a, you know, he's the face right now. Yep. Like every, and he's really popular. People have really kind of, you know, he he was ha- hated for so long yep. and hated on for so long. Uh, and people really he's put in his time. He's become kind of that guy that people are like, yeah, it's Miz. Um, so you got to figure he's going to get over at some point. Yeah, that would be a great way to have his dad get a little piece of revenge. 
and you don't have to you know you know you don't have to worry about him doing anything like you know he just you know he was good taking the bump he just fell down like an untrained guy would yeah. and, and it looked real and just laid there until until and and it was it wasn't even it was a little unbelievable when his came up was like you all right like it asked him and it was kind of like one of those work shoot type things like mm. are you really all right and he's like yeah yeah i'm all right uh, but it was believable because he kept his eyes closed and we've all i think everybody can relate to that where like you fall down or you hit your head or something you not necessarily get beat up but something bad happens and somebody near you it's like you're all right and you just lay there and you're like yeah i'm all right but you just don't want to open your eyes because you're hurt mm-hmm. so it was believable but it was like all right like yeah, maybe sell a little more take him aside and be like like look mrs dad <laughs> like just just don't don't say it so clearly next time be like uh oh, so mm. a little more sell but no it wasn't unbelievable and you got the big spot you got the big spot and um yeah like everything was i i guess like there's a couple matches you're like yeah whatever they're kind of did we really need this the the, the race mojo match did we really need yeah. that like uh just shorten it up did we really need 10 minutes of elias no well you know something they could do which would immensely help both mania and the shows after mania is save some of these matches we've mentioned that don't need to be on mania for those shows after like like you know have a big ic title match in the main event between um baylor and uh and lashley on on the following raw have shane and and miz on the following smackdown have some of these matches that we don't need on mania have them build through mania have a bunch of these guys part of that like andre battle royal and then have them have them single matches the the following um monday and tuesday so you have something already there that you're not rehashing and uh you've already built to those uh, you know, people are already in town for Mania who are going to be at those shows, and I think that would help those shows be more interesting. And you wouldn't have to worry about all the injuries and all the people who can't wrestle those shows like they had to this year. Because yeah. overall, God, there's a lot of injuries. Overall, though, I'm, I'm glad we didn't get Beach Ball Mania. Uh, no, that that waited till that uh, was, Thunder. That, uh, or <laughs> Thunder. Yeah. yeah, it felt like Thunder. It felt like a circa 2000 episode of Thunder. It was not good. Um, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah that, Smackdown. Smackdown. We got mm. Beach Ball on Smackdown. So, um, although although uh, occasionally if you get somebody like Cesaro that just goes up and steals the Beach Ball and pops it, like it get, they get a huge pop. But, uh, yeah, it's I'm, I'm glad we didn't get Beach Ball me. Yeah, like that was good. It was a really good WrestleMania uh, for us as fans. Not so much for for talent. Uh, Rip Sash Banks, right? Like, yeah, I mean, who? And I mean, so interestingly, yeah, Dean Ambrose leaving. Everybody like, allegedly good. Good for him. You Work, know, shoot, shoot. He, he deserves he deserves better. Blah blah blah. You got the revival when they were talking about asking for their release. People were like, yeah, yeah, the WWE weren't using them. Those guys are talented. They they deserve an opportunity. Blah blah blah. Uh, you hear about Sasha, and like it seems like the internet is all of the oh she didn't win her match at Mania, boo hoo, crying in the backstage, throwing a temper tantrum. Photos come out of her and Bailey out in the arena watching that main event, like they're out there supporting Becky, uh, right. Charlotte, and Ronda. I'm like, so, come on, guys. So we're we're obviously talking about that they, they drop Bailey and Sasha drop the title of the Iconics at Mania. Yep. It immediately comes out that Sasha's unhappy, tried to quit after yeah. during Mania, like yep. during the show. Uh, they talked her off a ledge, but it looks like she's, you know, she's asked for a release and she's got one foot out the door. Mm-hmm. It's also been reported Bailey's unhappy. Yep, and they jobbed her out on Raw quick. Uh, yeah, so um, I think the reason there's so much blowback about Sasha is there's been reports in the past that she's not necessarily the easiest person to work with backstage Mm -hmm. Uh, rusev buried her in a tweet today i don't know if you saw it Uh, basically told her she should be grateful to be there and bye don't let the door hit you on the way out Mm. just buried her um so i mean i mean i i said on twitter people are like you know mentioned uh what i just did you know that like it's weird that you have all these like male athletes who uh and wrestlers who are talking about leaving and they're getting all the support but as soon as uh is um sasha says something it's like oh she's throwing a fit in the backstage and throwing temper. I, i'm like i don't know i don't know how much of that is your 
your testosterone based wrestling fan in WWE, some of them thinking, hey, a woman and just as lucky they even get to be on the show. Maybe. And you know, that's not a way to like look at it. Like I said, I think I think if if this were a report about Randy Orton, a lot of people feel the same way too, though, because mm. Randy Orton's a guy who's had a lot of backstage yeah. you know, but, I mean, difficulties. You also have to look at her her she's had five title reigns, uh tag team and four They've uh, all been real short. Yeah. They've yeah, all been that. three months or under. Yeah. Yeah. Real real short runs. Yep. I can understand in her position being frustrated. Uh but again, we don't know and if those some of those reports are true, maybe that's why those runs were kind of mm. short. We don't know. Uh is it a good thing if she goes someplace else? Probably. Yep. She's super talented. Everybody Absolutely. knows it. So maybe she would excel someplace else. There's, you know, a, being a, be it AEW, be it Impact, be it Ring of Honor. Well, she's got options. There, there are. There's her, and uh, right now, free agent Tennille Dashwood floating around out there. I think and she's trying to get an AEW offer. I think. Offer. I think if if those two go to the same place, um, I think you have a uh, uh, upgraded women's division, regardless of where they went. True story. That yeah. would uh, that really fill out the yep. AEW women's. And, division. In fact, that might be the 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 negative side of the G one was the uh, the women's title match. It just, um, I mean, it, with the third time we've seen it. It was fine. It's tough. I don't know that's, where they that's go a tough from position. But yeah, they're 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 still trying to build that division. Like, yeah, let's be honest, the division. women of honor. They're trying mm-hmm. to build them. Um, they're it's a shallow talent pool. Yeah. Like they're they're well, talented, the, but there's not depth. The six woman tag match that opened the show was amazing. Yeah, and, and when you that was really good. You know, so, I mean, you, they basically had their entire women's division on the show. Yeah, it felt like it. There's no, it's just not deep. Yep, talented, just not deep. So. Uh, you, yeah, Sasha's looking for an out. Uh, apparently, uh, Road Dog said to Vince, uh, y- "You don't know yeah. because he is out as the lead lead uh, creative director person on yeah. SmackDown. Uh, frustrated yeah. with as the reports come out, it seems that he is frustrated with the long hours he was putting in. Not that he didn't want to work long hours, but he, they would work." stupid hours including like all night video conference calls to to put the show together and then they you know they deliver the show basically sunday and then monday was spent with vince rewriting the show for tuesday Hmm. because vince wanted to rewrite the show or even on tuesday they would deliver it monday and vince would rewrite the show make them rewrite the show and change all the booking on tuesday and he just got tired of it yeah um Oh, and along with he was also being criticized about continuity and things like that. Well, it's hard to have continuity when you're being overridden every week yeah, by your boss. Exactly. It it, it really is hard. Yep. So um, he has said deuces and put in his notice and will be making an appearance with uh, his former tag team partner in AEW Creative shortly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I heard when they asked, uh, <laughs> when, when he was interviewed about it, he said, uh, oh, you didn't know? AEW better call, call somebody. somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to make that call in a hurry. Yep. Uh, I don't see why not. He'll have a job. I mean... Why? Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you put him, put him in put him to work? I mean, it, I mean, know. if you can get Road Dog and and Billy Gunn both, you know, within AEW, and you can get one match between the New Age Outlaws and the Young Bucks on a show, like why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Like, I mean, that'd be worth it, the, that'd just, be worth the, the the deal right there. Yeah, I mean, it make it makes complete sense, especially since they want to build tag division. You know, they don't have to put those guys over and and make them you know the top guys in the tag division, but you know, you put them in a couple matches. Uh, you know, just even for a little short, little nostalgia run, makes sense. It it does seem that uh, the Dean Ambrose, the Dean Ambrose thing is not a work. It does seem to be a shoot. Reports are that that AEW is offering him six million per yeah to come to a come wrestle at AEW. That would make him if he were getting six million per. That would make him the third highest paid wrestler in the business behind mm-hmm. Brock. And I believe it's Brock and Cena. I think Brock's at ten, Cena's at seven five, and then everybody else is at five or less. Yeah. Kudos, get get your money, man. Absolutely. John Moxley will see you at AEW soon. As long, <laughs> like, as long as he doesn't do that stupid middle rope clothesline thing every match. Every match, once in a while. Yeah. I like it. 
It, it needs, just it gets needs to tired. be like one one. Because his clotheslines yeah. are his clotheslines are no joke. Like for him being a small guy, mm. he throws a clothesline like Stan Hansen. Well, you know when he wants to deliver it, because recently in WWE it's all been terrible. Well, <laughs> so, I, maybe that's because yeah. he's on his way out the door. Mm. No, I don't want to get injured. I got a big contract coming. I got fat Fair money enough. to make. Fair enough, because everybody else is injured. Have you did you see the 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 names on WWE's injured list? Uh, it I explains looked, a lot. I haven't looked at the list. All right, so it. Daniel Bryan got injured and was sent directly home after Mania, and uh, no word on what the injury is, but uh, he won't be back on TV until like doctors clear him, I guess. So I don't know what the injury is. I'm really hoping it's nothing Not super severe. Related. Yeah. Let, let's hope it's knee related or something. Yeah. I, I hate to say that, but like, yep. let's hope it's not head related. So AJ Styles got injured in his match with Randy Orton. Ugh. Uh, uh, I heard Randy Orton is also hurt. <laughs> everybody, just everybody, man, um, walking match unit. Ronda Rousey injured. Injured. Yep. Uh, Charlotte Flair apparently is injured. Oh boy. Yep. Uh, some kind of tweak of a knee or something. Okay. So um, maybe you know, workable. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yep. Banged up. Yeah. There's banged Definitely up. Definitely banged up. Injured, so yep. And then a lot of banged uh, up. And then I guess Roman, or Roman uh, had uh, some kind of uh, bang up, so that's why he wasn't on TV. Uh, well, at least so, I mean, they were, I'm like, wow, like this is a lot of your top well, guys. Well, maybe that's why the shows were so bad. Yeah. Is they had to write people off. Yep. Maybe we don't need to bash the WWE. I, I, I'm still, there's still so much talent there. I, I, I've got to assume. There is no excuse that the bars in two main events, yeah. two nights in a yeah, row. What the, <laughs> I mean. What, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, Especially when you had, you freaking, from, you know, you put Seth versus Kofi out there. You could have just ended it with the bar interfering, right? That yeah, could that could have ended it, and then match. and then had the tag match on SmackDown, so that way you didn't have that match. Then made you know, uh, it didn't make sense. It was no reason to do it twice. Sense. No yeah. sense. So, uh, but, but yeah, yeah. when so, have your rosters out, you know what are you gonna do? You do what you got. I do. did really enjoy, and I, 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 you had to have enjoyed this. Samoa Joe, Braun Strowman. That yeah, that was <laughs> yeah. Can flip ambulances can't pick up Samoa Joe. Oh God. Uh, what are you doing like i love joe don't get me wrong but what come on like you got a guy that like you he's flipped everything uh, well, i'm not finished with you yeah. i still want that shirt um S samoans have a higher mass and density oh than what <laughs> normal people do oh that's it yeah huh? okay yeah, that's that why their heads are so hard that explains yeah. a lot um yeah, no, that was. That's why Goldberg had a hard time getting Haku up in the in the jackhammer when no, you do it. No, that's just because yeah. it's like the, the density. Yeah, yeah. That's, I'm just gonna go. That's because Haku is just Haku. Um, not so, destiny, but density. So uh, we're not cutting a warrior promo. Good lord! <laughs> well, thank God we're not cutting a warrior promo. I want some viewers left at the end <laughs> of this. Um, yeah, man. So uh, bad shows Monday and Tuesday. A lot of AEW. Jim Ross officially signed AEW. Yep. He's going to be, and I know there's a lot of people who've criticized Jim in the last what two years. Mm -hmm. Too old, needs to retire. He's getting a lot of that. He seems really motivated, man. Like yeah. I've seen a couple of interviews. He looks like he's dropped some weight. Uh, it looks. Is he on the full gear challenge? I don't know, man. <laughs> like I, I'm just I'm really. He looks. He looked. He he. I saw him set and do a 15 minute shoot interview. Happened to just find it on YouTube, and he does. He looks like he's dropped some weight. It looks like uh, uh, his Bell's palsy is really like in a real good place right now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's been uh, not that that stops him, but you know, it it goes up. And we've all seen it where ooh, he's he's really it's yeah. really is his. It's a little harder to understand him this week, and that's always good when his Bell's palsy is doing really well. Um, He's got this backstage role that he's senior advisor. He doesn't even know what it means yet, but I mean, I think that's just a we're going to ask you questions because you're Jim, like yeah. you know, like like the uh, the 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 video where they asked they asked Cody, you know, why Jim Ross? What do you mean? Why he's Jim fucking Ross? <laughs> like I was like, well, he does have a point. Yeah. If you have a motivated Jr., that's good. I think that I think people are going to really have to eat some crow. I think he's going to be just fine mm. calling that product. Well, I hope so. Yeah. Because he's Jim Ross. He's Jim yeah. fucking Ross. Like, let's hope so. Uh, yep. And it'll be interesting to see who they pair him with. Um, Aren't uh, they pairing him with, uh, oh, God, I can't remember his name. 
the the he wears the luchador mask. He was he did a he did yeah, all I in. don't I don't know they 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 haven't really announced because he's he's been yet. announced as part of the team. He and, is part of the um, team. Uh, Alicia. Yep. Yeah. Uh, they they have announced some of the other, but I don't know. They haven't really announced two man booth, three man booth. Mm. They haven't announced exactly who's going to be doing what everywhere. Pretty much the only thing they've announced that we know is Jr. is going to be calling everything. Like he's going to be their prime play by play guy. Yeah. That we do know. We'll see who they working with. Uh, I can't imagine. You know, I can't imagine they'll probably try a couple people out, mm. but I think that that team will firm up pretty quickly there's yeah. definitely there's there's some talent out there av- available so there's there's some wrestling announcing talent out there tell you as far as wrestling announcers go kevin kelly got a hell of a pop at g1 nice like yeah like when he came out man people like him and coca Bana, they both got huge pops nice so yeah. that's good uh yeah so you know turner looks like turner uh, looks like a lot more moves coming to AEW. people just kind of filtering over we'll have to see if marty ends up there I still say, like like I was saying, if they get Ambrose, they really need to land one more top or near top level guy. They need to go in and reach into WWE and pull him out. They got Jericho, but they didn't really go into WWE and pull him out. Mm-hmm. He was already doing some other things. Is it a big get? Yes. Uh, but he wasn't active over there. Dean, that's a big get. If they can land one or two more guys where they go in and reach in and pull like a mid or top level guy out of there somebody that's in the mix that makes them a player because perception is important Mm -hmm. okay the perception of what you're doing on a show is important and if you're you're going in and raiding wwe roster talent actively raiding it creates a perception of the the for the journalists and the media that you're for real yep like a lot of people we know they're for real. There's this real money investment. Uh, Tony Khan's not playing around. They're building for the future. They got a real TV deal, but it just, it's a game changer when you're going in to your competition, even though you're trying to avoid that word, you're not trying to compete directly with WD. Yeah. You're going into your rivals to, and pulling out their talent, actively pulling out and not, not like impact where you have guys that were buried and had a ton of talent, but then they come over to Impact and they're top guys right away. You know that doesn't always look good because they were, you know, not, they were buried on on WWE and then they're top guys yeah. in Impact. That means Impact's top guys are WWE bottom feeders. Mm-hmm. That's what that you don't want. That you want those middle, upper middle, or top tier guys. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we'll see. We'll see who. Decides to uh, to take off. I mean, the, the WWE roster is really, really, really heavy on talent. And they're, I mean, Sanity, what are they doing with them? Nothing. Um, you know, Bobby Roode. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the, there's, there's a lot of guys there who could take off. There's a ton of guys, but like I said, it's, and I don't know if there's a really good example of that mid upper level mm-hmm. Dean's like a really good example. And there's a handful of guys. I just don't think they're real. I don't AJ's know. AJ's not a realistic get. Yeah. Because like mo- he's just making too so, much money. So most of your, most of your upper mid card are guys who have recycled down from your, your main event. So like right now in your upper mid card, you have um, AJ and Orton and Roman. And I'm like, like none of the, none of those guys are going like yeah, I mean, that's the issue right now in, in your main event right now you got like kofi kingston and um you know seth rollins and daniel bryan and so none of those guys are going so like like you know you're gonna have to look the you know the guys who were in that the upper main like braun Strowman or um not going like, well, or Shinsuke, honest. or Shinsuke, or Rusev, also have Shin cycled down. Shinsuke is an interesting one. He cycled down, so mm. it's he's kind of down right now. He's yep. at the low point of his WWE run, but I think maybe that's strategic because he has kind of eluded. He's going to go wherever the money is. Mm-hmm. He's you know getting up there. I could see him back in New Japan. Likely. That's what I'm saying. I mean, that I, seems I, to be... he, I think he's at the point in his career. He's about dollars yeah. like he's setting up his retirement right let's be on he wants to go and perform and have good matches and whatnot mm-hmm. you know, i'm not saying anything negative i'm just saying he's he is alluded that when the wwe contract comes up he could say if yep. the offer's right if there's a better offer japan i think i think the 
I think the two serious bidders are going to be New Japan and AEW. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll see. AEW's throwing around a lot of money. He'd be a big get, and yep. he he'd be a way better fit over in AEW because he'd be able to do more uh, down you know over there. So we'll see. He's kind of the interesting one. Unfortunately, KO just kind of re-upped a little yep. while. He's locked up. I, and like, I don't know what Sami Zayn, if he, he re-upped. I know he just came back. Yeah, just but came back. Like, whatever the hell they're doing with him, like him coming out on yeah. SmackDown and doing the, the, like, you don't deserve me. And go, I'm like, what What are you, Lacey Evans? Like, why am I seeing you on my it, TV if you're not doing Ziggler nothing? It's 2.0. Yeah. Uh, or Lacey uh, Evans yeah. or Eva Marie or, you know, I'm like, that, 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 that has not gotten over yet. No. It's not going to get over. Um, You guys need to quit doing it. Yeah, <laughs> like. No. Nobody uh, wants to see that. Nobody, no, not at all. And yeah. it didn't make any sense. Another, you know, you're like, hey, it's Sami Zayn. He's coming back. This could be good. No, just botched. Yep. Completely ruined. It does look like maybe Bray's coming back finally, though. Yeah, I heard that, like, around Royal Rumble. I heard it well, again they, they going that, into Mania. They did that, like, weird, bad puppet, <laughs> that that bad mutant Muppet thing, mm. like the, the box that looked like some kind of bird thing and then it, it, it was very bray wyatt-esque yeah. maybe bray's coming back but what are they going to do with him bury him again yeah like they bring him back he's one of the best talkers in the business he's a good worker he gets super hot gets super over gets buried yep don't do anything with him can't buy a pay-per-view win yep wins like 20 percent of his pay-per-view appearances you're not going to well, stay wins over. don't matter travis yeah, Duh. Cor- yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll see how much wins don't matter when aew starts up. exactly <laughs> so. exactly I don't know, Bob. Uh, I think we we covered quite a bit. Yeah, I I, I do believe we covered pretty much everything we need to cover um, without just droning on. Yeah, I mean we could talk all day, but you know, seventy two hours just like Mania. I mean, God, yeah. I mean, to to be fair, I left here at six a.m. on a Thursday morning and arrived home at about eight o'clock on Monday night. So there's there's plenty to talk about but uh you know it's uh there's only so much time on these shows and uh yeah let's wrap let, let's wrap it up as always wrap it up. subscribe yep. like share please we do, are doing us a favor we are smart down radio on all of the things be it facebook twitter youtube or twitch so you can find us on all those uh check out our uh video package from new york man we got a we got a playlist going and uh, we have a video with uh, Mike Zapsick and Ming Chen of the Comic Book Men. Yep. We sit down and talk about comics and wrestling. We got uh, a couple yeah, special I heard, videos. I heard I heard you got some more videos coming like in the next day or two. Absolutely. We got a little Bullet Club Tom Block Party. Action. Absolutely, little man. Tom action. Yeah, a little too sweet. Little, little right, Tom with the Tom double champ. Double champ champ. Double little, champ. Got to... Got to uh, Get a little little video with the champ champ. Absolutely. And uh, got got a lot of video at the event. You know what's really cool? Seeing Haku play uh, Cornhole. Yeah. It's just being Dude, uh, Haku's Haku. Yeah. It's Haku. just legendary. Yeah. And there's a fantastic story all about Haku uh, not letting the, the, the guys have uh, pets when they were kids. So you, you'll, you'll get you'll, to hear that get one that too. too. And uh, yeah, no. Um, and, and you get to see all of the people hanging out, the cool. the chop fest that was going on in the parking lot, the the amazing buffet from Jimmy Seafood, um, you know, all of the things that were going on at Bullet Club Block Party. Sweet. Uh, so it's going to be all awesome. Right. So Tongan Death Grip, that like button. Yeah. Share us. Hit it. Let's you go. Know, you're Tongan Death Grip it? Yeah. <laughs>